Good morning everyone and welcome once again to Thought for the Day here at uh, Trinity Church in Rainhill. It's lovely to have you with us this morning and I hope you're well as you've woken to a new day. Um, we're looking this week at the subject of faith under pressure and um, we're uh, on the second of our series today and this morning we're going to be looking at Joseph. Uh, but before we do that, let's, um, let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather again this morning around your word and we pray Lord that you would teach us, you would equip us, you would enable us and through your Holy Spirit Lord stir us to obey and to be encouraged through your word this morning we pray. And we ask this in Jesus name. Amen. Okay yes yeah, so we're looking at people uh, people in the scriptures who had who were, whose, whose faith was put under pressure and to be honest we could pick any number of people because everybody who's ever lived as a christian uh, at some point in their lives or at many points during their lives usually including you and i our faith is put under pressure isn't it and and it's not unusual uh, sometimes we think we are the only one but we're not we're, it's not unusual yesterday we looked at elijah and elijah thought he was the only one it's a, it's a common thing for us as christians to think that sometimes we're going through a worse time than everybody else but every but every single christian that's ever lived has always had these these issues with their faith being tested and put under pressure at different times and today we're going to look at joseph joseph is another there's so many of these old testament saints the thing about it is you get lots of detail in the story with these people um so in in these early parts of the old testament in particular you know the patriarchs and those old testament characters you get a lot of detail so these are great for looking at how god worked through their lives and joseph is a great example of this he has a lot of chapters dedicated to him at the end of genesis and uh, we join the story in chapter 37 now the thing about joseph is of course is he's so it's a popular story it's been made into a musical you've probably all seen it or at least heard songs from it and um, so th that makes it something of a story that we were quite familiar with but here, yesterday, one of the things we said is so important when, we're, when our faith is being put under pressure in times like we're living today is to remember that God is sovereign and God has a big picture and a big plan and he is still working things out, even though it may seem really bad. And the, the key verse, if you like, in Joseph's story comes right at the end, really, in chapter 50 of Genesis and verse 20. And the verse, Joseph is talking to his brothers towards the end of his life. And he says, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. And that's the truth, isn't it? The world may do evil things to us and it may cause us real problems and stresses and strains. And life may be really, really tough at times. But even in the midst of all of that, we know God is working his purposes out. So Joseph. He's a young man. We join him and he's, about, he's, a, he's a headstrong, probably about 17, older teenager. And uh, younger, he's, he's one of the 12 brothers. He's got 12 other brothers. Uh, only one of them younger than him. Everybody else is older than him. And um, he's the dad's favourite. We know, don't we? He makes him a special coat. He has dreams which kind of put him, talk about him, which actually God inspired dreams, which kind of talk about, predict the future that he's going to be in charge over all of them. And He's kind of a little bit of a, uh, as I say, a headstrong 17-year-old. He goes out to see his brothers out in the field. They are sick to death of him. Having said that, their reaction is pretty extreme, isn't it? It's very dis dysfunctional family. Jacob's family, Jacob is Joseph's father. His, his family is really dysfunctional. So are his mum and dad, to be honest. So, you know, we've, we've got all of this going on. And the brothers see him coming and they're sick of him. And they decide between them to get rid of him. They'll, they'll, they'll uh, kill him and get his, his, clo his that wonderful cloak covered in blood, take it back to his dad and say some wild animals got him. And uh, Reuben, the elder brother, says, no, don't do this. Let's put him in. Let's not kill him. Let's put him in a pit and just leave him there to die. So they put him in a pit. And um, and so Joseph ends up in a pit. Uh, we don't know what his position was before God at this point or anything like that. But what we do know is that the pit is a horrible place to be. And you could say he was kind of a victim of his upbringing. He was a victim of his circumstances. He was very headstrong. He was stupid. He made mistakes. He said things he probably shouldn't have said. But he probably didn't deserve to be left to die in a pit. But God, you see God's work working his purposes out. A bunch of Ishmaelites come along. He gets sold into slavery. He ends up in Egypt in Potiphar's house. Uh, a, a Roman official. 
and he, he works in Potiphar's house and, and all the way through you see this phrase coming through Joseph's story, the Lord was with Joseph. And so he does well in Potiphar's house, he excels, he's, he's, he's put in charge, Potiphar trusts him with everything. But then of course you know the story, Potiphar's wife takes a fancy to him, he's a young lad, she's left at home alone all the time and accuses him of trying to molest her and, she, and, and he ends up in prison and he's not done that at all. She tried to tempt him and said nobody will ever find out. He, he, he says, interestingly enough, in the, in the account in, in um, Genesis 39, he says that I can't do this because it would be a sin against the Lord. And so you see the Lord with Joseph there. The Lord blessed Joseph. The Lord gave Joseph prosperity. And, and, and he's been with him all the time. And yet he ends up then in prison because his master comes in and his wife tells on him and and so on and so forth, and, and uh, fits him up basically, and he ends up in prison for two whole years, two years in prison for something that he didn't do, for resisting um, for something, and, and, be, and doing the right thing, he ends up in prison. And sometimes in life, even when we're doing the right things, things seem to go wrong. Did you find that? I certainly do. We do the right things, and yet you know, we think, oh, God's going to be pleased with everything's going to go great, and actually it doesn't work like that. And our faith again comes under pressure. And we, we start to doubt, is God with us or whatever? And I don't know what, whatever Joseph was going through in that prison, it didn't seem to affect his behaviour because, again, he was a, a man of integrity. So uh, the, the, the head of the jail put him in charge of the other prisoners and, and all sorts of things. And he was still having these dreams. And, uh, and other people were having these dreams too. And J Joseph had this ability that God had given him to interpret dreams that we know of. And, and so a couple of officials from Pharaoh's house were in prison. Joseph predicted their future. He got it right. And when, and when the, one, the one that he predicted a good future to ended up back in Pharaoh's palace, he said, when you get there, remember me and try and get me released. The guy goes back to the palace and forgets all about him. So Joseph again is let down. What's God doing? Why is he letting this all happen? And then we find that Pharaoh has a dream, which is, to, is, is a terrible dream, but he can't explain it. And... Um, and uh, the, the official, this guy who was in prison with uh, Joseph remembers him and he goes to the palace and you know the story. He interprets the seven fat cows and the seven thin cows and all of that prosperity for Egypt. He, he's in the palace for a while. Pharaoh thinks so much of him. He ends up being prime minister of Egypt, pretty much really. The greatest civilization in the known world at that point. What an amazing progress from the pit to the prison to the palace. He's in the palace now. And God has taken him through all these things and the Lord prospered everything in Joseph's hand. And he was in a position then to when his brothers came over, when there was famine in, in Israel and people and the, the, his brothers came to Egypt to try and get food so they could keep the family alive. God, God was working his purposes out. Joseph recognises his brothers. It's a very dramatic scene. The brothers don't recognise him. And that's when he says that verse, you meant what you did to me for evil, but God meant it for good. Through the fact that I'm here, I can preserve Israel, if you like. And God's purposes were being fulfilled for his people. And we see there God got his people Israel uh, growing up in the land of Egypt in the greatest civilization in the world. It's an amazing story and an amazing tale that, uh, that goes on. But the ultimate thing is God's sovereignty all over it. That you meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. And sometimes when our faith comes under pressure, we think, where's God? Why has he let me go through the pit? Why has he let me go through the prison? Sometimes it feels like we're there. And sometimes we're in the palace and everything's going well. And we, we, we kind of live a life that tries to glorify God. We're not perfect, but we try to do the best. And yet somehow things always seem to go wrong. Well, these stories show us, don't we? This, these accounts show us that God is still sovereign in every situation. No matter how bad it gets, whether it's a pit, a prison or a palace, that God is still in charge, isn't he there? And the New Testament verse that kind of sums this up, because Paul picks this up, doesn't he? Romans 8, 28, we know it very well. And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That God is in control. Whatever our situation is, whenever our faith comes under pressure, we need to see that perspective we talked about yesterday and remember that God is with us. He's still in control. He's still on the throne. That God hasn't lost control of the situation. He's still sovereign and he has a bigger picture that we don't know anything about and we are just a tiny part of that and God has got it under in his hand however difficult it may be so I hope that brings you some comfort this morning I don't know whether you're finding your faith under pressure for whatever reason particularly in times like these we need to be encouraged from our, these 
accounts in the scripture, that's what they're there for, to help us to recognise that God is still working his purposes out, even when our faith comes under pressure. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, we ask that this morning that if for those of us whose faith is feeling a bit under pressure at these times, Lord, help us to remember and have a big picture this morning of your sovereignty. Be encouraged by the story of Joseph, whether we're in a pit, a prison or a palace, that you are still on the throne and your purposes are being worked out in us and in your world in general, your great plan of salvation. Lord, we thank you that you're with us again today. Be with us throughout the rest of this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, great to have you with us again this morning. Hope that's been an encouragement to you. We'll look again tomorrow at somebody else whose faith was under, under pressure. Uh, if you can join me tomorrow morning at half past eight. But until then, have a great day. God bless. Bye bye.